how can you build a connection between you and your reader? Now, as you can probably see here today, I haven't got the camera focused on myself. I have it focused forward and I'm recording here the walk that I do every day around this field. Now, there's a good reason why I'm doing that today and I will get to that in a few moments. But how can you build a connection between you and your reader? Well, one of the easiest things you can do is do it through story. You know, I don't know how many times you might go maybe for a cup of coffee or you might meet up with a relative or a friend or whatever and you know as you're chatting away the probably the beginning of the conversation is probably maybe about the weather maybe about the coronavirus or you know the coronavirus is on everybody's mind at the moment but it might be the coronavirus it might be the weather it might be trump or something like that but there's something probably that in the news that is kind of the warming you know the warm-up of the conversation and then after that then it usually would go to stories so somebody maybe might have a story to tell that they broke down the side of the road and they had a flat wheel and they didn't know what to do next and all those different things or somebody may have got a bill in the post that they weren't expecting or they may have got a surprise check or may have won a prize but people will tell their stories and you know their story will probably maybe fire up the story in your head and a lot of conversations are sometimes like that something like a tennis match will kind of ping pong and over and back with your story and my story but it's it basically all stories in the conversation and that's one of the things you can use to build a connection between you and your reader you know if you came to a blog that was on weight loss and it had five tips on how to lose weight now you can read that type of blog post anywhere you can do a google search i'm sure you could probably find a hundred blogs that have a typical article like that on five ways to lose weight or five ways to do this or five ways to do that and they are so generic you can find them everywhere but if you came to a blog and again maybe it was a five tip article but maybe if the person kind of broke up that article and spoke about how they were taking those five different th things and how they were adding them to their life or maybe if they had talked a little bit about you know their weight loss journey how they got to where they are how they became overweight or had some kind of personal story into it I'm sure by the time you left this blog post you would have a stronger connection with that person than you would from the dry and dreary and magnolia kind of blog post on the five tips and nothing else so one of the ways you can build a connection between you and your reader as you can probably tell by now is by doing stories and stories about yourself i do this many many times in my emails because not only is it a great way of me coming up with content because if you are writing an email regularly you need content often and one of the easiest ways is to take a story from your past and then use it for an email. For example, I remember one time when I was about 12, I was helping my father out. We, he, my father was a truck driver. And of course, when you're 12, you, when you are helping out, you like to act like the big man. You like to be you know, seen as more mature than you are. And this particular day, we were lifting. It was um, coach seats, like bus seats. And whatever was happening the the forklift or the truck or whatever that was broken that was supposed to take it all off was broken that day so we had to take all the things off by hand so here was me 12 and I was dragging these kind of single seat bus seats but I was dragging them from the back of the container up to the front and then somebody was taking them off me and then carrying them away into the warehouse so of course I was doing that and of course there was a group of men who were working along with me and at that age you don't like to show off that you're only 12 you like to act like you're the big man so i was struggling to drag these but i was letting on that they were a lot lighter than they were but at one stage one of the seats that i was dragging across the floor caught onto a pile of metal bars and it notes to me i didn't realize that the metal bars weren't actually tied together so when i put my back into it and struggled to free the seat i pulled all the metal bars down on top of my legs and my legs were covered by these metal bars and they, they were really really heavy these metal bars were used to clamp the bus seats to the floor of the bus so in that instant i was completely pinned to the ground i was pinned from the waist down my legs were completely covered with all these bars and of course when you're 12 i freaked out and i screamed to my father now my father earlier on i had watched him moving some of these bars earlier on and because they were so heavy it came to a stage that I seen him and another man actually picking those bars up together. So there was two of them, you know, taking these bars at a the time they were so heavy. But when I went screaming for him to help me, he came racing up the container and he got down beside me. But I watched him grab those bars 
and I, grew, I watched him fling them away as if they didn't weigh anything at all. In no time at all he had taken all the bars off my legs and had freed me and he was amazed when he looked at my legs they weren't broken there was no bone sticking out or anything like that. He pulled me up to my feet and of course me being young and like most kids I probably had rubber bones but I stood up and there wasn't a thing wrong with me. So I really really scared him that day and he was sure that you know my two legs were broken or something awful had happened to me but I was fine. So what I did was I had used that in an email and I had said that sometimes you know you don't realize what you can do when until you really really try or if there's some scenario that maybe has your back to the wall and you suddenly have to do things you didn't think you could do and you know you do those things. So I had mentioned that in an email. Now I'm sure people who had read that email had found out a little bit more about me and the message came across stronger because I was putting myself into that. So it wasn't just a generic kind of email that I was sending out saying, oh, you can do, you know, you can do things that you don't need to do, or I could use some kind of quote from some guru or some kind of self-development person. I had actually taken a story from my life and I had put it in that email and I used it for marketing a product that day. But in that email, I know I bonded between me and that person. And I'm sure those people on my list probably will remember that you know that scene of a small 12 year old pinned under a, in a container pinned with all these bars and his father coming down to rescue him because we all probably have had those moments where maybe a parent or a guardian or somebody has saved us at one stage but i'm sure that probably story stuck in their head for a while and because it stuck in their head for a while when it comes to my next email they're going to know me as the person who you know struggled under those bars who panicked and whose father helped him and how his father threw all those bars away as if they didn't weigh anything at all because the pressure was on him and he was panicking because he thought his son was going to be hurt. So I had put that into that email and it was a simple story, there's nothing too complicated about it but I bonded between me and that my reader. Now again that wasn't forced, I didn't have to do anything to bond with my reader. It's simply that we, you know, we are kind of wired that way, we are wired for stories. We tell all our conversation stories, you know, we watch TV stories, we watch movie stories. So everything that kind of that grabs our attention and keeps us there and things that we remember long term, as I said, even years later, for example, maybe something happened in the playground, you can probably remember that story 30 or 40 years later because it's in a story form. It has a beginning, it has a middle and it has an end and it still sticks in our mind. Now, going back to why I am focusing this camera the wrong way around than I normally do, I wanted to show you what I do every day. So this is the typical field that I'm walking around and some days I do two or three laps and I might do a video on each lap. So as you can see here now, you've probably watched some of these videos before and you haven't noticed what was going on because I had the camera focused on me all the time. But now that I have focused the camera the opposite way, you can see the exact route I take every day. So these videos are going to take on a more relevance to you or they're going to seem different because you have seen behind the curtain. I have showed you what I do and because of that then I have unconsciously built a bond between me and you because you can see what I do every day. What I see in the field, you know, the two dogs racing ahead of me and all those different things and that is why I turned the camera the other way around. So that's what you should do. You know, as I said, a lot of people will probably just write generic, bland articles that you know, if they did come into your inbox, would you really remember who they are? If you swap the names around, you know, would you remember that person? But you will remember people from their stories. When you will see somebody's name coming up, you will see them as maybe just the not generic Jane or Joe. It's that person who had that experience, that person that has that dog, that person that walks around the field, that person, all those different things. And they will stick in your head because they have built stories in your mind. So if you are trying to build a connection between your readers, again, it doesn't have to be through emails. It can be in your blog post. It can be in your social media. It can be in all those different things. But when you build a story between you and your readers or some kind of connection, you aren't just seen as another kind of generic average Magnolia person on the internet. There's a connection between you and that person. And the easiest way to do that is true stories. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode today, this video. I hope it maybe, you know, lifted the, the lid on what I do every day. So you can actually see what I walk around in the countryside that I have around me. So you can see it a little bit better. But that is what I'm seeing at the moment today. So that is a little look behind the curtain of what it is like to walk around this field every day. So as always, if you'd like to ask me a question, you'd like me to cover something in an upcoming video or a podcast episode, if you want to reach out to barryjmcdonald at gmail.com or if you'd like to go over to the Rightcom site, that's W-R-I-T-E-C-O-M-E dot com 
and over there we have a great free report that is called words to wealth and in it i'm going to show you how anyone can create money from their content i'm going to show you how anyone can create money from home simply just using your keyboard and i'm going to show how anyone even if you're not a great writer how anyone can make money from home with their keyboard in some cases you can make money with just a few words on a coffee mug if that is what you're inclined to do or if that's if you'd like to try something like that out you will find all that in the free report so if you want to head over there that again that's writecom w-r-i-t-e-c-o-m-e.com download the free report give it a go and let me know how you get on with it and as always thanks for sharing your time again today take care and here's me and the two dogs bye bye